Oh. Okay, we're gonna try. Did you guys hear? We found a microphone randomly. So let me know if you hear us better because Do we you found hear a microphone. Us better. Okay, we're gonna try to. Okay, okay, okay. We're gonna sing a song fast. We're gonna make this really fast because we're. <laughs> okay. And Saturday night actually tends to be this late sometimes, but usually you you you're nap. already on um, four cups of wine, <laughs> so who cares? Right, right, right. <laughs> Which time great? Okay, good. We got the Now, what do we do with it? If you have a webcam and you don't have super sound, die. So much going to this. Have super sound, but you don't have a webcam, die. Anyway, so what we're saying about this. Okay, much better. Okay. You guys are going to be in a, in a cup, maybe? Okay, good. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're now going to celebrate the, the oldest Jewish holiday in the world, Pesach. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have your Haggadahs ready? It's Haggadah, by the way, strongly. This is okay. called The Night That Unites, and it is a compilation of uh, contemporary sponsor on the Agada from Rabbi uh, Shlomo Karlobach, Rabbi Shlomo Karlobach, and Rabbi Soloveitchik. It's fantastic, yes, I, one I, of the best. Yes. I wouldn't recommend it if you were under six years old, then you should get something more colorful in the comics. Yeah. This is unbelievable for anybody above that. Yeah. So anyway, it, let me know if you guys love Pesach. It's one of my favorite holidays. Um, it's funny. I remember when I first moved to Israel, and everyone's talking about the Seder. It was like, I'm like, I didn't know Hebrew. I just moved here. And they were like talking about the Seder. And I was like, oh my gosh, these people are obsessed with Pesach. And then later, I find out that Seder in Hebrew means okay. <laughs> it just means in order. But Seder, everything in order. It's okay. And so that was kind of funny for me. that I thought everyone's obsessed we're talking about Pesach, but they were just saying okay. <laughs> oh, thank you for your your your. Yeah, for, oh thank God. you for being persistent. Yes, sorry. Thank you, it's thank been you about for three hanging hours out with us till we made and it. The kids and the kid is up. Oh, there he is. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> da you want to sing Manishtana? You want to sing with us? You, you just yeah, stay, just, over, just there. stay over there. Okay, ready? We're gonna manage tonight. It's what the, the, the children sing on Saturday night. Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. Manishtana. change and my parents are just here so every day he was like partying with my parents so we hope he gets to sleep at some Not to um, mention hour. A very long nap yeah, it took like a four hour nap would be oh. up until morning yeah, uh, down until morning hi allison how are you doing so happy you're here yay we're talking about passover and what is the first thing we do on passover, passover we drink not pass out. this we have a kiddush for Passover, for Pesach. Now, as we were saying before, for those of you who are going to have a Passover this year and don't know, all matzahs consumed tonight and all great juice or wine consumed tonight need to be taken in a recline, which is this position. On the left side. You know. On the left side, not the right. To the left, to the left. Which is a position that was traditionally 
that of noble people who were free. And it's a night where we are all free from slavery, be it slavery of the mind, yeah. slavery of the body. So what does someone do when they're on vacation? They have their drink, they relax and they recline, right? They're not like soldiers up and they can't even drink, right? We're, we're free people, we drink wine. A lot of people said, why do you drink? Um, drinking is not holy. But actually, you know, drinking all the time and not working and being lazy, that's not really so good. But when we drink, we drink at holy times because God knows that wine is very good for our souls and for our families and just to relax a little bit, right? So he has special times that we actually drink, and that makes it even a holier experience. So that's what I we do. I have to share with you guys something that I haven't shared with a lot of people oh, no, before. Listen to this. So... Uh, my family is not religious, the family I grew up in, and I became religious later yeah. on in life. Yeah. One year, my dad says to me, this can't go on anymore. You can't keep escaping, seeing the family on holidays because you now keep uh, kashrut, uh, kosher, you keep, kosher, kosher now, you keep Shabbat, and, you keep, Shabbat right. and you keep the holidays, but you won't see the family, so this is it's not horrible. working. Yeah. This is not how it's supposed to be. I agree. And the whole family like sort of gang up on me and said, you better figure something out because otherwise you're doing something not kosher. So we thought about it. I actually had good conversations with my, my dad's wife. May she live long, happy life. Okay. And we came up with this amazing idea. This is for anybody out there that has a similar story or situation. Right. Okay. We came up with what's called in Hebrew the Erev Erev Pesach. Or in English, Erev means the before, night before, before the night before. of Pesach. The night before the night before. What do we do? We get together before the holiday comes in, before all the restrictions come in. A couple of nights in. before, one night before, just before the holiday. The week of or Because or on Pesach, uh, you're not supposed, it's like Shabbat, you're not supposed to drive and stuff like that. Just so drive, it's hard to get to our family. Eat, eat bread or anything yeah. of the sort. It's, it's, it's complicated. So we meet and we have together a sort of kibbutz, warm, sweet, uh, mm -hmm. musical, fun uh, pass overnight. Right. We're all very happy. We all hug and kiss and say goodbye and on Pesach itself we'll celebrate with with, with families uh, that that, uh, that 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 keep that keep the laws right. everybody's happy so it's, it's like it's yeah. really like anybody who's like in a similar situation don't give up on your family it's super important figure out how to make it work right 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 okay so we have our first cup of wine we have four cups of wine on Pesach which which represents we have four mothers of Judaism Sarah Rachel Leah and who was the other one? Sarah Rivka. Sarah Rivka Rachel Leah. When your name. Girl. My name, by the way, is Leah Rivka, which is two of them. Two names. She forgot her second name. Here. So it represents the four mothers of Israel. And you know what? The mothers in every family are the deepest part of the family. They hold the secret. So when they say we drink wine, secrets come out. Our kid is playing over here. Yes. So, so let's do it. L'chaim. And it also symbolizes, uh, uh, symbolizes four uh, tongues. Uh, Throw different words in the Torah that are mentioned in the same verse relating to redemption. Mm -hmm. That God bring you to me, and uh, and I'll I'll um, bring you to the land of Israel. So, um, so we're gonna say we're gonna say a l'chaim again, just for those who okay, you're saying right what okay. well, for those who are new here uh, in, in the in the conversation. Just see, uh, you know, we're not gonna be actually eating or drinking most of the stuff because we want to keep it fresh for the actual Saturday night, but yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll go through oh the work gosh. so that you're prepared. Um, okay. Allison, you are unbelievable. We are, with your money, we're going to plant a tree for you in Israel. We live in a new community with no and the kids like shade. You are unbelievable. So we're going to plant a tree in honor of Allison. Yeah. So nice of you. Amazing. Cherry tree? You want, you let us know if you want a cherry tree, you want a pomegranate tree. Or eucalyptus. I don't know. We'll, we'll let you know. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, listen. I made this uh, interactive sheet for Pesach. If you want at the Etsy store, about each step of Pesach. There's about 12 steps. So gonna we're going to ask. Right we ask right now. So this is for the wine. The question is, wine is a symbol of freedom and joy. What makes a seder for you? <gasps> Everyone who celebrates Pesach, let me know what makes Pesach joyful for you. And if you don't celebrate Pesach, what makes you happy? Okay, and here's Let some background music for this question. And what's your favorite part? What makes you happy, Beth Seder? Happy Beth Seder, guys and girls. You can, you can answer. You do? Yeah. 
I'll, I'll wait for the end of it. <laughs> okay, so what makes it, what, what, what is my favorite part of Saturday night? Uh, oh, wait, we have one. The kids from, were small. We used, we used to, to dress up. up. Oh, oh, yes, yes, that's oh my gosh. Favorite too. By the way, Elan is also dressed up. He is wearing his uh, wedding, wedding outfit. Night, wedding outfit. This is what you wear on Pesach and Yom Kippur. And he's wearing this robe he wore under the chuppah. So he's also dressed up. Mm-hmm. And I'm dressed up too. I mean, right? A little bit? Yeah, she's but got But she probably the, dressed up. Did she's you got dress the up like tinfoil, Egyptians? Uh, the tinfoil look. Yeah. Up. Uh, my, so what makes you, yeah, what makes you my, fa- my favorite part about about uh, Passover night, to be honest, when everybody goes to sleep and I go seto hopping with all those that sit, like. Oh, yeah, like we're like, I'm like only <laughs> goes to sleep with my kids. <laughs> Allison, you've got to see where you can go to a Seder meal. I'm sure you know a lot of Jews, you're in New York. You could do it. If not, then, I could try to find you one. I know oh, a lot of that Jewish is so people. funny. Wait, wait. AOHB wait. says that wait. for the makosa oh ice, we used to throw small more. That's, that's, that's so that much fun. My... What about a fikoman? Anybody? A fikoman. Oh, yeah. The... We're not there yet. We're not there. Yeah, so that's, that's dessert, yeah. right? Um, okay. What makes Seda joyful for me? I always say Manish Tana. You can just tell right now the little boy. See, he's. <laughs> <laughs> say say Manish Tana. I like when the little kid says Manish Tana makes me very happy. It means that the Jewish people are alive and even the little highlights of my of my night. Okay, what's the second thing we do at the Pesach? Seder. The Seder means the order. It means like step by step. How meaning everything could just be a mess, right? Like there's a holiday, it's okay. a mess. We don't so, know what we're doing. So 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 to get Okay. About the uh, Saturday night, that in relation to all the things that we do, the part about the Saturday night, the main thing is to keep the kids awake yeah. and asking questions. So we do things on the Saturday night that the only purpose of them is to get the kids asking, "What are we doing this for?" So one of the things that we right. are gonna right after we do the blessing of the wine that gets the holiday started, we wash. What do we usually wash for? Bread. No bread, right? The bread. <laughs> we don't eat bread on Pesach. There was a, a lady who became Baal Tshuva, meaning she right. became religious, is, and she, she heard that you have to wash your hands in the morning. So every morning she woke up, she washed her hands, she and had, really had some bread. bread first right, thing before right she had by her bed else. at the end. And she yeah, bed, bed, and, bed and bread. Anyhow. Also, you have to make it but, interesting. You can even jump on the table. And they're like, oh, my gosh, Amma, Dad, what are you doing? You jump on the table. Why? Because this night is special. We want to make Judaism and our history exciting, right? So we do it. Show our kids that that life can be exciting. Jump on the table. We can wear costumes. Did I just get the, the uh, Did I just get permission to do that? Yes, you can jump on the table. Actually, going to someone else's house on Pesach. So I'll let her know that you're going to jump on the table. Our little kid is singing. Okay. Okay. All right. So anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna at this point wash for a vegetable, which we never do, and the kids are supposed to ask. The problem is that they teach them this stuff in kindergarten, so they already know. But like, hopefully, we'll find well, something we instead of not. Well, yeah, yeah, we're going we're gonna to wash for a vegetable. Okay, yeah. fine. I'm going to wash my hands for a vegetable. Here comes our famous uh, Pesach oh, um, so very, stuff. So very important on Pesach. We are all free men and women, so we don't wash our own hands. Oh, we yeah. wash each other's hands right, right. like uh, like, like other people. Like, and the reclining, yeah, all these queen. special things. Okay, so I'm going to oh, wash okay. your oh, hands. Oh, my God. Look at this, everybody. How many? One, two. That's okay. Did I say blessing? But I meant blessing. No blessing. blessing. No blessing. No blessing. Okay, no blessing. There's no, no blessing with this washing. <laughs> he wants to wash his hands. Oh <laughs> What is he doing? He wants to wash his hands. Okay. Put your hands Stop. right there. Wash your hands, kids. <laughs> One, two, three. Yay! We're doing. We're doing pizza. Why are we washing our hands? Okay, how about you? Yes, yeah, pizza. Yes, pizza. Good job. Yes. Pesach. Pesach. What do you eat on Pesach? Um, vegetables. Vegetables. That's uh, right. Okay. We're gonna eat some vegetables. What <laughs> if you're alone? Do you need someone else to wash them? No. 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 no but it's I just... strongly recommend that if you're going to be on Saturday night um, somewhere, it it better be somewhere where there are some of the people. It's just much more nice. Allison, I, I'm gonna find you a seder uh, in New York if you want, and if you can go, you can go if you want or not. But I can find you one because it's really interesting to go. 
Um, okay, so we wash your hands and then we do carpas. Wait. Okay. Wait, wait, this is important. Any tips, Any tips for, for the Seder, Seder with teenagers? teenagers? Okay, Make so listen, crazy. the Torah, yeah, well, yeah, the, the, fun, the, crazy fun. the Torah Candy. talks about four sons, okay? We're not there yet, but we'll start but with that. But, but, I mean, the, question, the question was asked, okay? Yeah. And, and the whole point of our son is asking questions right, and, and responding. Right. So the Torah talks about four sons, okay? Uh, a wise son, a wicked son, a uh, simple, and a one that does not, did not know how to ask questions. The Rabbi mm -hmm. Lubavitch says there's one more that is not mentioned, uh -huh. and that is the son that doesn't make it to the Seder night. Okay, whether he's in his room listening to some music, or he's yeah. out, or he's not, or he's not interested. He's not interested. In religion. So how do we yeah. make it, how do we make it relevant even for that son? Okay, right. the teenager for that matter. Oh. Um, I, I I found different different things that people people do. One of one of the most uh, successful. Is just like with a kid, you offer candy with an old with a teenager, teenager you offer some treat. Sushi. That it would <laughs> while sitting at the night. Another it. thing, it, it could Ooh. be amazing. Teenagers Ooh, how like about the young they, on the younger age. How about the, when they do the plague of ice? Do you give ice cream out? The teenager like, like, like hello. For the or or have them prepare in advance something that they're going to do for us sure, when, when, yeah. when, when sure. we were growing up and we were already teenagers. Uh, we had a part at the end of the Seder night that we were going to put up a performance of the Chad Gadya, for those who know what it is, and we prepared in advance, like, costumes and, well, I mean, younger teenagers. Right, right, right. But, um, right. but as long as you have something that you're, you, you, you know that you're going to have a chance to participate, you're going to bring something of yourself to the Seder night, it's not right. all going to be just about the grown-ups right. sitting there and talking, then... Um, I know like someone, it. I don't know if they're teenagers, but every step of the Seder, someone was in charge of it, that they were going to say something fun about Karpas, which is parsley, or what is this? I don't really know what it is. They, you know what I mean? They have a part, they they feel special because a part of the Seder is, you know, more. Um, Think about yeah. it. Yeah, now we're doing, oh yeah, I just spilled it. Spilling okay. is part of the Seder night. It's mm -hmm. Electronics are not usually it's part of it. Good, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I get. I get a napkin. You keep okay. going. You keep going. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna keep going. So carpus, we take a vegetable other than maror, less than the size of an olive, and we dip it into salt water and we recite the following blessing. No, I'm not gonna say a blessing because. Oh, that's true. Oh, potato. This one. Really? Yeah. Okay. But what? Okay, we're, so we're dipping this in order to. Um, like the crying, right? The salt water. Yeah, the salt water. We remember the tears that we shed in Egypt. We were slaves in Egypt. Yeah. So, okay. So if you sit down and hold this, I'll say the blessing. Okay. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Borei Borei Haadama. Amen. Okay. Oh, yeah. he wants a bite. Busy. You, want, you want a bite? Yeah, bite. Say Baruch. Yes. We love the children participation. Oh, yeah, you did it. Very nice. Very good. Wow. Now, this is so good. There's, there's, basically, there's basically three themes that are throughout the Seder night. One of the themes is we were slaves. Second theme mm -hmm. is we were freed. God freed us. And the third theme is the future, which is the children. So all this is like the three things you want to have in mind when you're having a Seder night is how do I address the past, the difficult past, the the present, to remember that I am free. Pick up a little bit. Okay, I hope it gets better. Again. Oh, oh, oh of course, of course, of course. Oh, oh, that, that will be oh, the microphone the sitting microphone? in the wine. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, we live in the middle of nowhere, so sometimes the internet goes off and on. So we really hope it gets a little better. Let us know. Okay, let's keep going. It's okay, okay, Mark. Okay, Maraki, right? Is that so you say your name? Hi, let me know how you guys are doing today. So good to see you. Okay, let's keep going. So, the next thing we you, do, you can skip a few steps if you if it gets to uh... we made it to, I don't know. Okay, so the question for Carpas is, yeah, ask me some questions. Everybody, I have a question for you. We have greens, but we had a potato anyway. What signs of spring do you see these days where you live? Where are you living? Let me know. New York, um, Canada. Let me let me know if there's anything springing up where you are. Let me know in the comments. Spring is sprung. There it is. Oh, hey. oh. <laughs> how are you doing? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, what's springing up for us? What's springing up for us, Adam? 
The kids. The kids. They're springing. We, we actually planted a few trees today. My, my yeah. wife's uh, parents were with us now for two weeks. It was really, really sweet to have them. They come uh, sometimes once or twice a year. And uh, and and they supported us uh, a lot in the last few, uh, well, basically since we got married. It was really nice to have a chance to put in some trees in the land of Israel together with them. They, yeah, they, yeah. they, they helped. They were really moved by we it. We planted an apple them. tree here and a nectarine tree. So right. we're really excited about that. So that's blooming. Allison's freezing yesterday and it's freezing today. Oh my gosh. Do you see anything coming up? Any flowers? I'm looking for Yeah. It. We live in a very beautiful day. place. We live in a place that um, is, how do I explain this? It's not a city. We're in the middle of nowhere where it's a mitzvah from God that we're supposed to settle the land of Israel. So we're in a place where no one lived before, I don't think. And we're literally settling the land and we're planting and we're trying to do good things. There's a mix, right? When you're in a beautiful place and you can have a garden. But, you know, not much going on at all. So we're, we have enough to do in our house. Okay, but it's like a balance. You know, you can live in a city and have, you know, a social life and everything. Or you can live in the middle of nowhere. It's a little harder. But this is where we want to be. And it's a big mitzvah to be here. Right. Okay, Maraki, you live in southeast U.S. It's 80 degrees. And you have pollen everywhere. Oh, my gosh. I'm allergic to everything. Hi, Mary Smith. How are you doing? You live, tell me again. I get... You not she lives where do you live not texas maybe texas and you have some flowers going so sporadic i don't sporadic yeah, sorry yeah. flowers <laughs> i thought it was like some weird flower i didn't know awesome cheyenne do we have a jewish community where we live yes it's uh yeah there's about 10 houses where we live in this, um, neighborhood 10 families and then there's another like neighborhood that has 40 families about 20 minutes minute walk we're um, having by the way i said yeah. we're having the same sort of weather it's supposed to be already uh full full blown on the spring and, and sunny days and then you'll have like rain showers every every few days it's, oh it's, yeah it's we have rain and then it's die hard winter yeah it's crazy but uh but we're still praying for rain yeah uh, till till pass over a day right. when we start switching over to only praying that did you for rain six months out of year and then there's a time we don't in israel there's no like nile river we have nothing like huge a river uh, or water that we can you know have for our living the only thing we rely on is rain water so god wants us to pray in israel so that's where we get most of our water we have a few jewish communities around here the, the yeah. mountain we live on specifically is about 12 families. We get, we're getting a bit larger as we speak. We're trying to get more people here with God's help. Sophia, you're in the Midwest. and have, That's so great. I, I told you I had a video last week. We pick dandelions all the time because it's so good. And tea, it gets rid of toxins in the body. So, and my, my son loves to pick flowers and make tea. He goes, I want the tea with flowers. So we have it all the time. So pick it and make some tea out of it. Oklahoma's warm here. That's great. Oklahoma. Wow. That's awesome. Now, what's the next part of our Seder? Okay. Let's see. After Karpas, we have, I don't even know what this Yachat. means. Yachat. Yachat is something we're going to only talk about and not actually perform because it would be a, a, a shame for the masses that will remain now whole. But we can show you the masses. <laughs> right. We basically at Seder night we have we have uh, not the box we have three matzahs usually hand uh, handmade mm -hmm. and you take the middle matzah and break it in half. Okay. Half of it is going to be hiding away for a few comments. A few comments, right? You the other half is going to stay and be there together with the with the with the matzahs for the, and, and when we eat it. eat it. Okay. Right. And yachatz means half. Oh. Means like break it in half. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Let me see if he says something about Yachatz in here. I'm feeling he says something really amazing. Let me see. Maybe not. Okay, Yachatz. Do I have a question out of this? No. Um, hold on. Breaking the matzah, children. Yeah, read this. This is really nice. Oh, here we go. Uh, breaking the matzah, our children will fix the world. Reb Shlomo Kralabach has an insight to offer us. Why do we break the matzah at the beginning of the set? Why do the children bring back the broken piece of matzah at the end of the seder? The afikoman, the broken matzah, represents the brokenness in the world. There are so many broken hearts, broken lives, so many tears. We live in a world of yachats, of brokenness. brokenness yeah. The world is fractured, and we need to know that in order to repair it, uh, we need to know that... 
two glasses? <laughs> no, it's just a funny sentence. Yeah. We, we need to know that we need to repair it, but do you know who will fix the world? Do you know who will bring wholeness to the world? Our children. Our children sure. will search the house, search the world, and bring back the broken piece to make the world whole again. Wow, ah. so nice. Yeah. Wow. And I bless everyone who doesn't have kids and want kids, that they will have kids. And anyone who wants more kids, God will bless you with kids, you know. It's not easy, but they, they really do have this, like, pureness and happiness where if you're having a bad moment, and they're not going crazy, but they're in a place of, like, wholeness and, and pureness and happiness, they can really, like, change everything inside of me. So it's a real blessing and miracle. And it's this why specifically it's so important to focus on the kids on Saturday night. We really want them to be a part because yeah. they are a future. They are the future. Everything, and everything. and uh, it's interesting. I, I recently that it uh, that it says in the prophets that in the future when when uh, when prophecy comes back, yeah. it will be the children that are on the highest level. Wow. Could you only have prophecy when you're happy? Right. And they're happy. The right? closer the, the, the closer you will be born. To the time of the full redemption, the higher you'll be on the level of prophecy because your 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 mind is still not blocked. You know, we're, we're still yeah, you, yeah, I have a lot of what's it called like patterns, and blocks, blocks, and yeah, stuff. Well, blocks. Children, children, they're, 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 they're still they're still fresh and they're still ready to change. True, I size um, Alice and your mother loved matzah, so does mine. She, every Pesach she makes something called matzah bread with eggs. She, you you uh, soak the matzah in some milk and then you mix it with eggs and you put a little butter and it's so good. And you put it on a pan. It's yummy. Um, I'm gonna say something else. Um, let me know if you if you all have a favorite uh, childhood memory of Pesach, a Passover. Let me know if something you did you remember and you love about it. Yeah, you gotta try that. It's so good, Alison. Really. So with this I'll part of the it. setter, it's some it's a it's the longest part between uh between the the kiddush and the part that we actually start eating. It's called Magid. We're not going to do this whole thing. This is like the part where we like read the whole story, uh, uh, like parts and parts of the Exodus. We, we, we will share some commentary. Is another This beautiful, is like sharing beautiful... the story of a Pesach of our history of being slaves. This is, we, we're sharing the story of everything. Right. Yeah. And to answer also the question that was asked earlier on about teenagers at the Seder night, so this is really on the ball. Another Reb Shlomo Torah. Why are young people turning away? When the Torah speaks to us about the Passover story, we are told, and you shall teach your children, as it says in Exodus 13, 8. Go to the story. On the Saturday night, mm -hmm. we are to tell the story of the Exodus from Egypt to our children. It is a time when parents pass on the tradition to the next generation. But Shlomo Kalabach would say that there are many times that we see young people turning away from the right path. Do you know why they have turned away? The reason is that there was no one who believed in them. I was fond of quoting Reb Nachman of Bresla, who said, the greatest gift one can give somebody is to give them back their self-confidence. Yeah. There was a story told about Reb Shlomo visiting a prison in upstate New York. He wrote from a callback, played music, and he shared like the deepest um, Torah spirituality from hearts to really connect people after the Holocaust. After the Holocaust, people broke it, and he really tried his hardest to put Jews back together again through music and through through song and through you know heartfelt. And among things, other things, yeah. in 1960s and 70s, used to visit prisons on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, to, to, Started in San Francisco. To, um, I'm from San Francisco. Yeah. Started his uh, thing there. Yeah. Reb Shlomo had been invited there by the Jewish chaplain who asked that he perform a Hanukkah concert for the Jewish inmates. There were so many, there were, sorry, there were not so many Jewish inmates at the prison, only a handful. There was no payment involved, but Reb Shlomo accepted the invitation without hesitation. It was a long trip, taking three hours each way. The small concert was a success, and Reb Shlomo made the event a real Hanukkah celebration. But that was only the beginning. When the Hanukkah party was over, Reb Shlomo turned to the chaplain and said, Please, I'd like to visit the rest of the inmates here. Could you get permission? Reb Shlomo went into each and every cell where he hugged, kissed, and talked with each inmate. Then he went into the dining hall, the recession room, the kitchen, and into every possible nook and cranny of the prison where he was permitted to go. He was not satisfied until he had searched out every single prisoner and worker, making sure that nobody was overlooked. Finally, he was ready to leave, and he was walking down the hall when a big, burly inmate with a scarred, pitted face started running after him. Rabbi! Rabbi! He shouted, please wait! Rabbi Shlomo stopped immediately and turned to him. Yes, my holy friend, he inquired sweetly. 
embarrassed, the young the, the, the man began to sh shuffle about almost as if regretted his impulse. And then he finally gathered courage and blurted out, I just love the hug you gave me before. Would you mind giving me another one? But Shlomo gave him the most radiant smile in the world and then tenderly unfolded him in his arms. They stood clasping each other for a long time. Finally, the inmate broke away and heaved the deepest sigh of the world and started crying. Oh, Rabbi, he said, no one ever, ever hugged me like that before. And then tears streaming down his face. You know, Rabbi, if only somebody would have hugged me in that, like that 10 years ago, I certainly wouldn't round up in this prison today. Mm. So, if to connect this to the story of the Exodus, after Seder, hug your child during the Seder, connect with them. You know, uh, our sages teach that because of righteous women, we merited to leave Egypt. Mm -hmm. We had so broken in Egypt. Mm -hmm. The Egyptians had ways of making us lose all hope. They put us to work all the time in jobs that were not fitting for us. It's like the Holocaust. They run us down. For 210 they made years. us go to these that sunk into the, into the sand. Right. They were really trying to break our souls. And the story has it that the men had decided that they were not going to procreate anymore. There was not going to be any more children. And the women, the women went ahead and, and said, no, there's a future. And they had they, they, they got their, their, their husbands Mirrors interested together, to, continue, right. to continue the generations. Right. And uh, they, they held up the hope. So because of those narratives, women, we actually, there was some, there was a nation to save and bring out of Egypt. Right. Thank God. Let me do a sun break. We're doing a fun Okay. Just who die, you know. Oh, uh, Sophia asked why oh. the foil on the glasses. Uh, uh, okay, we'll tell you after the song. <laughs> so you, you can share, you can share. No, 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 people, it, 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 we're not supposed to have any, like, leaven products of, of oat, spelt, barley, any bread product, pasta. So we clean our house like crazy. And sometimes we can't kosherize a place so you put tin foil on it so it doesn't so your food new food does not touch anything of, right. of these of, of new products so leavening agents uh and and uh and what is it called and uh hey, shalom, shalom. sourdough were invented in egypt so we we, we stay away from those sometimes. yeah anything that makes us um boasty right is that like a word like ego boast we, we we're very uh humble and we use matzah that's a very humble bread the humblest bread ever. Cracker. Okay, Dayenu. Dayenu? Sure. We did that, no? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If God took us out of Egypt, no, and he hadn't had but you. People know Hebrew. Da we did the Dayenu. Oh. Keep doing That's right. The mirrors that the women got their husbands interested again. They went to build uh, the kior, the, the the sink uh, that was later on used in the Mishkan in the, the temple in the desert. If he took us out of Egypt and hadn't punished the Egyptians, if he punished the Egyptians and didn't open up the sea, die.
the way, a lot of it was born in, in um, Israel. So he knows all Hebrew. I know like 60% Hebrew. Hi, Sophia. Dayenu, the whole song is yes, about yeah, yeah, being yeah. thankful even if, even in, in every step of the way. You know how sometimes yeah. we're very, very focused on the end goal and life mm -hmm. in general, right? Like you're thinking like, how will I not just make a job, but also right. make enough money, also get my career, also like build a house, I'm also like, like, uh, and, and you can't be satisfied. So the whole tongue of Dayenu means it's enough. Meaning, even, even, even if, even if it was just that, it would be enough. It's teaching us to be, like, to be thankful, thankful every step yeah. of the way. We sing that on Pesach, which mm -hmm. is interesting. Specifically on Pesach, because you are only a free person if you are able to be thankful. You haven't reached the goal yet. If you're obsessed mm -hmm. about the future, you're not free. Right, so, right, right. They say in the days of redemption that our fruit trees, not only the fruit will taste like fruit, the whole tree and the bark will taste like fruit. And that's maybe what we have to do. Like the whole process in our lives has to taste good, right? We're always like complaining. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. But with God's help, we can be thankful for where we are. So if anyone wants to be grateful for something, you can write right there. We'd love to hear it. And I said, your daughter's welcome to come and play with us, and uh, you're welcome to visit too. Yeah, everyone's, everyone's uh, <laughs> can visit here and hang very, out in Israel. Very, very happy to have uh, um, let's see. We're just reading which guys are writing. Hi, Mary Lewis. How are you doing? Um, great. What is the next thing we do in the Seder? Let's see. After we do a Bagid, do we talk about that yet? Yeah, but that's what's going to be did. like the main the main part of the Seder. But talking we... story of of the Exodus right. of Egypt. That's what we're talking about. Right. And then the next thing over what's is washing for bread. Oh, for matzah. Um, oh yeah, matzah, yeah, 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 matzah. Right. Matzah, 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 man, I wanna be. I'll be, I'll, I'll be, I'll be right back. You, okay, matzah. Okay, oh god. I'll be right back. I get so nervous. This is like public speaking. I hate public speaking, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I'm seeing what's next. Oh my gosh, the Magid is really long. What we have to say. By the way, the Haggadah is the book. Of our history that we that we read throughout Pesach. If anyone wonders what I'm doing, right? What do you like about Pesach? Um, I'm asking my three-year-old. What do you like about what do we eat on Pesach? What do we eat on Pesach? Um, uh, Ma? Matzah. Matzah. What else? Um, food. Food. That's right. We do. We and we drink a lot too. Um, okay, what else? Come on, sorry guys. I'm trying to... By the way, oh, Ice Eyes, you're amazing. You're like the best thing in the world. Allison is a blessing to all of us. She is such an amazing soul, and she's just spreading her light to the whole world, which is making us all so I'm so thankful for every one of you. By the way, I started this YouTube channel, and like, I don't know what I was doing. And I still don't know what I'm doing. And I, I'm, I'm so shocked how much I connect with um you guys people watching me i feel i can't even explain it i i feel like i have a community i live in the middle of nowhere with not so many people and i feel like you are my community and you're my friends and so i'm so thankful every week you know some of you guys comment and it really means a lot to me to know that we're all here together learning and growing together and i'm so happy you guys are here and to get to know every one of you so it's, it's a blessing total blessing oh you're doing great okay matzo man okay yeah that's okay what's next we're going to eat the matzah, and we're not really going to eat the matzah, but that's the next thing we do at the Seder, is that we eat matzah. Okay. Um, hi, Mary Lewis. Let me read what you said. Hello, Leah. Maybe a little, okay, but if, this is a Pesach like cleaning, not kind of a burden. If you are not able to clean enough. Oh, so good, yeah, yeah, okay, it's a total burden, okay. <laughs> we were slaves, right, in Egypt, so maybe we're, like, tapping into it a little bit, but it shouldn't be like we're going crazy. But, yes, it's a big burden to clean like your whole kitchen and go crazy but again we try to make it fun we put music on i put on um, classes um sometimes the one year i put on every cabinet i cleaned like something i want to get rid of like ego or um jealousy every cabinet was something that every time i was sweeping it i really was trying to clean it from inside of myself um depression um overeating <laughs> everything i want to get rid of I was cleaning each cabinet and trying to get rid of that inside of me and praying to God to help me to get rid of that. So, uh, so with cleaning, can be spiritual uh, too. Okay. Oh I no. just said her night. I just, I just. Oh found my this God! Bread. 
I just found this. What, what are we doing? Oh my God, this? You just, just killed kill yourself. I, I, <laughs> you're dead. You're dead. What do we do? 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 Gosh. What am I supposed to do? Can't believe it. Do I eat it? Um, oh my God. Is it, is it, <laughs> what do we do? What do you do? Oh God, what do you do? So okay. So, the sages teach that if you find bread in Passover, if it's the actual holiday, you put a bowl over it. Okay. And you deal with it later. Really? And Can't later, you? what you do is you take it. And you burn it. Burn it. Mm -hmm. Burn it. Because you're not allowed to keep it. Now, gosh. we're not there yet. Oh my gosh. We're not at any of this yet. But on the night before Passover, we go search the house for all the leaven that might still be in the house. Right. Uh, bread, a sure. uh, candy with uh, with uh, with uh, all with, with gluten in it. Yeah. You know. yeah. Whatever. All the all the all the the, the leaven things and whatever we haven't put aside specifically sold. We have to we have to get rid of it. We have to burn it, but we also make a declaration that anything we might have will be as if it's not ours. So you this sell is it. Actually, you sell it. Yeah. this is not mine. If right. this was Passover, right. it's, it's like it's fine. Right. It's just here. I'm not gonna eat it. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not. Right. You don't touch. You you, you can pour bleach over it. Some people do that. I don't you know, can whatever. if you have nothing to do. With it. Okay, Elon. Right. Listen, someone uh, Paula Roberts had a question about Pesach. Okay. Yes, I'm all here. Okay. Her her this question was. Right was Earlier today, she says, I saw an advertisement for instead of literally pouring boiling water over everything, what you do for kashering, just curious. So she could she steam everything on a high, high, high uh, temperature? Are we talking about like the surface of? Uh, let's say the surface of the. Oh, with the steamer? Uh, yeah, instead of putting boiling water. If it's 230 degrees, I don't know if it's Celsius or Fahrenheit, but um, you might not know. According, but... to, according to some opinions, you could. The only question would be if you were to do that, uh, if it would, um, it if it would ruin, if it would ruin the 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 surf, the counter surface to pour boiling water for sure, you could do something less. Right, and it also, that's why right, we put some oil. It kind of depends on what it was used. Mm -hmm. uh, what what type of surface are we talking about? I don't know. What she said this earlier. She said this earlier. So we'll okay. research more and let you know. <laughs> we'll maybe ask you another question from. I don't know how to say you burn outside. <laughs> you yeah. make a bonfire, a yeah, red bonfire. Just smell, just a, yes. You want water? There we go. Some water. No. No. <laughs> All you listed like ego said you're burdensome to get rid of, but worth it. Yes. yes. It's, it's true, right? It's it's you know, people sometimes will miss the point. It's like you you'll have a fast day. Oh, and we're not time. eating or drinking. But yeah. if you didn't like think about how to make yourself a better person, you don't really do the fast day you have passover and you won't be you'll be eating only kosher for, pes for passover food but you're still screaming at your kids or at your wife or you're being a lousy grouch you didn't really do it even of our parents uh the next thing over at seder night after that after what we do with the the matzah we actually have three stages of eating matzah three different types first um Okay, wow. we have the matzah. You eat on its own after making two blessings over the matzah and over bread, because on this night, this is the bread we're eating. Then, after the matzah, we have oh, yeah. bitter herbs. Bitter herbs. Bitter herbs, or uh, better known as lettuce, in this case, uh, which is a. Uh, uh, we, don't have, hold on. We, don't have, which, we don't eat matzah yet. We wait for Pesach. Okay? Yeah, we're going to wait for Pesach. We eat it. So we're gonna eat save it. the special flavor of video. Thanks for asking. And then, and, and, and. What is this? This is lettuce. You want to have some? Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> lettuce. <laughs> lettuce is a bitter. Is a bitter. The bitter herbs and a little bit of what's called a oh, haroset. Oh my God, so good. Haroset. It's gonna be a lot better than the one this, I just quickly put together. This but represents uh made bricks in Egypt, the what's it called, the cement in between? Yes. For slaves making things in Egypt. This represents the whatever if anyone can say what it's called in it's English. It's apple with uh <laughs> it's, it's usually uh there's there's different recipes for it. Right. This Depending one is specifically what, yeah. based on apples with date spread. Right. And uh and you, you mix it all up and you put it on the masa and the bitter herbs. And back in the days of the temple we also had the sacrifice of Pesach. And then yeah. we put all that stuff together and have a nice so, sandwich. So guess what? Where sandwich, sandwich came from? A sandwich first came from this, from Pesach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first sandwich in the world is having matzah with this and with lettuce 
together. And there's the best recipe. Uh, I don't know if I think they're like Yemenite or Moroccan. They have date spread, apples, and um, a lot of date spread. Like it's a good thing Lord Sandwich is in here to sue us for, for taking away. Lord Sandwich. Half, half date spread, half apples, and like a handful of uh, walnuts and cinnamon in the food processor. Make it like really processed, and it's like the best spread Tiny ever. bit of wine. Not like this. Not thick. It's like really um, processed, yeah. whatever you call it. So good. Right. Let me see if I have a question with that. Well, did we show? Did we actually show the setter plate? Did we mention no, what was that, going on? No, let's do that. But it's a mess. There? It's it's still it's fine. It's fine. Okay. it's fine. We're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of. Hold it. on, we need the first. We have a lot of spillage going on. We don't need this over here. One second. Right. We have a lot of spillage. Here we go. Okay. So on the set on the setter plate, we. Have, okay. Okay, this is the <laughs> hold this, hold this. I'll show this. Later. Okay, so we have here we have here a a piece of chicken which chicken. is representing what would originally be the the korban pesach the the pesach sacrifice that we brought in the temple. Okay, let me and do we it. Like have this. Here, we have here we have here a bit of the let, uh, of the lettuce which is the bitter herbs. We have here a hard boiled egg. Hardwell egg represents actually the Beit Hamikdash, the the Holy Temple, and because it's, it's round, and it means that even when it's destroyed, That's it comes back. Day. We're gonna go again, and uh, we have here uh, haroset, haroset, which is uh, haroset, horseradish, horseradish, which has also been traditionally used as a bitter herb, especially in countries that didn't have so much lettuce growing in. Uh, we have the carpas, the, the potato the egg? she ate okay. before. Our son wants the egg. There you go. You yeah. can have fun opening it for two hours. Okay. And um, what's yeah. this? What's this? What that was this? The, 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 the. We do a sacrifice in the in the holy temple on Pesach. Right. Yes, so we will not actually. People will not bring yes, usually uh, it, yeah. red meat to the set of plate because you don't want it to look too much like the actual sacrifice. But the the, the chicken bone reminds us of. of, of um, you don't oh. want it. Okay, he doesn't want it right now. You'll save it for Pesach, okay? Go over here, sweetie. And we'll give you something else. Go over there. <laughs> right. Okay, okay. And again, most of these things are, are there so the children will ask. Like, yeah, like, this about? Like, like, well, that's all it's... Yeah, like, because guess what? In Judaism, it's all about asking questions. It's not about maybe other religions to say, okay, be quiet. This is how it is. No, we, from day one, we're, we're taught to, answer, to ask questions. And that we don't understand and that we're upset about that we're angry about that we're happy about that we're curious about the jewish people are are taught to ask questions all the time so that's what yeah. we're learning on Pesach. and we mentioned in the haggadah four sons right i mentioned that before the wise the wicked the the, the one who's simple-minded and the one who doesn't know how to ask specifically that fourth son that does not know how to ask questions there is an assumption that what you have to do is to start just telling the, one of the, our prominent uh, uh, commentators says no. When it says open up for them, it doesn't mean to start talking. It means to teach them to ask questions. Yeah. Because if they don't ask ask questions, if you don't ask they questions, don't care anymore. you don't care and you don't yeah. learn because you're just you're just you're a zombie, right? Yeah. You have to know how to ask your questions. So ask questions, sometimes you guys. A good quest, uh, sometimes a, uh, an unsolved good question is better than a great answer. The best answer for any Jewish person is I don't know. It's so good to be humble and know, and sometimes say we don't know because there's so many questions out there we don't know, and that's okay. And we learn about it. That's, we're the people of the book, right? So we learn all the time. Right. That's what people ask. Okay. Well, for, for the record, uh, Isa says here yeah. that it's nice to be taught to, to ask questions. Yeah. To tell you the truth, it's not like something that's like accepted in all in all Jewish communities, but it's it's an idea that it has to. Well, then it's not right. It needs to be brought more. Needs to be brought more out. That is not Jewish. It's not true. If it's not accepted, then it's not Jewish. It's not. You have. I'm just saying. Right. You can see educationally that a lot of a lot of teachers make this mistake. They don't have. They if 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 the child is quiet, just give them the information. But it's not what the smartest, right? <laughs> anyway, I have a question about Pesach. Do you guys know the story of Pesach? If you do, this question's for you. If you could time travel, which moment in the Exodus story would you like to experience? <laughs> yes? I'm, the already I'm, I'm, I'm in a different uh, That's what's cool about our, right now. Right. That's what's cool about our Pesach Seder. It's like we're going back in time and we're, we're experiencing what happened to us. 
today. Okay, I grew up in Odin, but went to a Catholic school 12 years, and then hated it when I asked, but yeah, anything in the religion. Yeah, yeah, um, the Jewish people are learned, so we have to ask questions, because that's the only way to find truth. We're really, we feel like Judaism has a lot of truth to it, and so the only way to get to the truth is to ask questions, and so we're very open with our kids that they can ask anything they want. You know, I once went to uh, Shabbat, okay? in California. My sister is not religious, um, but she asked me all these questions, and I didn't know the answers, and I was in shock by her questions, but they were such good questions, and I I didn't know the answers to all of them. I wish I did, but it was just an amazing. some of them. Yeah. yeah, some of them we told her afterwards, but it was so amazing. She was asked, because, you know, people these days, we like to, um, what's it called, social warriors. We like to try to be good for the, for the people, for our generations in all different ways, right? So, so what does Judaism think about this? Why, why are they so like old age in that? You know, it's just for me. It's like when someone says you guys are in the Stone Age. Well, it's just like saying organic food is is not good. <laughs> it, for me, it's like saying um, sorry, kind of like goes um, organic. Okay, it's like saying organic food is not good. It's like it's old. It's the oldest thing you can have, but it's also the healthiest thing. So right. sometimes we have to go back to being ancient. We have to go back to being simple and to live a life with family. With spirituality, of music, of, of tradition, and that's actually really good for our souls. So that's what I learned. I went through all different phases of life, and I think this is the most meaningful to me. So anyway, right. sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, like regardless if it's Judaism or not Judaism, the, the the idea of having a child just accept information without questioning it, and also mm. the fact that a teacher might not actually have any answers because they're never faced with questions, both things, both, both ha are very problematic because it doesn't, it doesn't cause the teacher or the child to learn. My dad, I bless him. He's, he's not, he's not religious. Uh, he does an, uh, an amazing teachers how to get their, their kids, uh, their kids to express themselves like and to go talk, into like, a, like a, a, a learning process that they're teaching themselves. Right. Uh, I asked, do you have any tips for teaching kids how to um, ask questions during toy learning? Yes. Okay. There you go. What, what you just did. What did she do? She asked a question. Oh, oh yeah, ask questions. Like, oh, oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you have any questions there? <laughs> or, oh, I mean, oh, an, 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 like an, you're an, talking about something, then ask, like, oh, do you have a question about uh, what we just said about rabbi, blah, blah, blah. Right? Yeah. Well, uh, I would also find okay. find find points of, of interest before the, before before curiosity is killed off. Find points of interest that the kids have, and and let right. them go and uh, and you know encourage them to delve into it. Well, into first of all, every kid it. is different. Some kid might be visual. So with that kid, when you're learning Torah, draw the story. Well, this kid likes music. Now put on. You're talking about King David. Now put on music of the Psalm of King David that he sang. And then I'll say, oh, let's do this together. Or or um, maybe a lot of times on Shabbat, I make Shabbat cards. Uh, what's it called? Parsha cards. I make it physical, sometimes just to learn. So I write cards. I write questions on cards. And we go through them. And everyone's kind of enjoying it together, right. answering questions about, say, learning Torah. But I'm not a Torah person. I'm a very creative person. And I need that when I'm learning. Um, so that's just And I'm sure every kid is different. I'm trying to think, what are kids? What are the when we teach Torah, we, we, okay, we ask them questions, like a Shabbat, Shabbat's a special day. Every time they answer a question right, we give them a little M&M, &M, okay? Right. So it makes it sweet. You know, that's what it's about. Right. <laughs> and then another, another thing that I think a lot of us fail in, we're very keen to give answers. Yeah. We're very keen to feed information. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, sometimes sometimes I think just to, to acknowledge that a uh, kid came yeah. with, a good, with a good question, even if yeah. there is no answer. It's fantastic, you know. Just to just to take take a moment and say, wow, that's a great question. Yeah, I know. It is so but that's a great question. When your parent says I don't know to something, it's the best thing in the world because it shows them they're human. It shows them that there's so much to learn in this world, and that's why we're here to learn. Right. All right. The next part of the seder is. Um. Hold on. We're, good. we're at Maror. No, we're at Cora. No, we we we, oh, we, we, we mentioned we those did things. everything. What about the ten plagues? You guys know that about the ten plagues. <laughs> That happened in Egypt, and that did this happen to Jews and Egyptians, or what? The ten plagues, because I didn't really know this. So that, what, 
What's one the miracle? Of the, one, of the, one of the interesting one of the interesting things is that they they, they came out in the last uh, last thirty years with a lot of scientific um, um, no. proofs, explanations, fact that of, explanations how, yeah. of how the plagues, the ten plagues, are actually uh, can be all explained by science. Yeah. How, for example, the, the wind happened and then all the water. The, yeah. the plague of darkness is like sandstorm, and the locust could be a locust and attack. And the firstborn and the, the blood first... could been yeah. like um like red sand in the water yeah. all these things could have could be explained scientifically the one thing they just don't explain Volcano. they don't seem to like right. bring an answer to and the torah says it explicitly is that everything in egypt specifically happened to the egyptians and did and not, not happen the to the jews, jews. that's Meaning crazy right i didn't know that till god, god made a separation between yeah. those he was at this point teaching me the lesson to and there was he was not a right. I mean, and they're your neighbors. You lived in the same building with Egyptians. You were their slaves. We weren't separate. So to say that something happened because you lived separately, you were in the same building. Right, Allison? Is that crazy? <laughs> That's crazy. It's a miracle. Well, yeah, a volcano erupting in the in the Greece right. could very well happen. But if a volcano erupted in Greece well, and you're juice? there yeah. and another person's there, why would one be spared? We are talking about, like, uh, for example, the sages teach that when the plague of, of blood, well, let's talk about Egyptians the, right. would drink from the same flask right. of water, and it would turn into blood in their mouths and into water in the in in uh in the Hebrew. Crazy. Mouth. So, but what were the ten plagues? Right. Let's say what they were. Okay. Oh, oh, so we do that actually. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we have wine. Up with some wine. L'chaim, everybody. May God bless us with great wine, and may we be fruitful and multiply. It's the first um, Here, give mitzvah. Us for it's, all the the people the jews is to be fly like grapes so. yeah so uh we're gonna we're gonna do a little traditional thing that we do we take a, a pinky point it into the wine and uh pull out drops saying the name the, the the names of all the plagues and we have Dumb. blood blood frogs you, you say hebrew i'll say english okay fine Dumb. Dumb. blood frogs frogs Kinim. I don't know. Lice. Lice. Well, do oh, the other God. one. You say Lice. English. <laughs> the Hebrew. Keep going. I'm guessing the Hebrew. Oh, you're guessing yeah. the Hebrew. Oh, oh. I don't know. What does that Mixed multitude of and, uh, wild animals. Oh, wild beasts oh, everywhere. Beast. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay. Um, devil. Uh, oh, no. Corona. Oh, 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 plagues. Yeah, like, like. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Corona. Okay. Corona. Right. Not the uh, beer. Okay. Sheen. Sheen. Oh Boils. no. Boils over the body. So you're, what do you do? You shake the camera. Oh, sorry. Um, boils over the body. Boils. That was the plague. What else? Uh, we have uh, a barad. Uh, uh, I know what this means. Uh, thunder, lightning, right? Hail. Hail. Hail, hail everywhere. That's so annoying. All Our the time, right? Our bay. Locust. Locust. Oh, God. Gross. Hoshif. Darkness everywhere. You can't see a thing. You can't, can't even see your finger in front of your face. Can't move. You can't even move. It was so dark for the Egyptians. And Makad Bechorot. And the firstborn, Sin. death of the firstborn. So why do we put our finger in there? We're taking it out. What are we doing? What do we put? Our, does anyone know why we put our our, our pinky in it in the wine for that? So the children wait, wait, wait. will ask why we put wait, wait, it. Wait, he's, he's, yeah. Why, why do we do that? Why? why? Do we put the pinky in the wine? Right. That's right. He said something in Hebrew. I don't understand my kids. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mary, you studied um, world history. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so much fun learning, and we call our cleaning spring cleaning. Isn't it funny? You know, spring cleaning, Pesach like cleaning, all this stuff. No one should rejoice in suffering. You're right. Yes. No one should rejoice in suffering. Yes, but, that's true. You're true. But. It is crazy. But. But, I mean, what if they were to not know, used? It's important it's important to know that the the whole story of, of the exodus is actually called it's mm -hmm. the the exodus of egypt mm -hmm. what, why is it not called the exodus of yetziat israel the exodus of the jews They're the jews right why right, is it called right. yetziat israel because the whole point of the plagues was not in order to just cause suffering it was in order to change the mindset right of the Egyptians of the whole world in that time of uh, that there's no such thing as freedom and the plagues no, were freedom. trying to, the, the, were, were god's attempt to come into the minds and say 
I'm going to change it all. I'm going to change the rules. I'm going to take a nation that's been uh, enslaved for hundreds of years, and I'm going to bring them out and show is such thing as freedom. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt, but you're going to get it. Eventually, you're going to get it. And the whole purpose of, of it was supposed to be that all of Egypt would come out with us. Once they mm -hmm. got it, they were all supposed to come out with us. It didn't happen back there. Mm -hmm. But straight. we see in this generation how more and more, even through all the hardship that's that we've seen throughout history, yeah. all the wars, still all the go, pain, still going on. All, the, yeah. all the sadness, all the, the, the misery, the, there is a light that's coming out more and more, and people are seeing it. How through, I mean, God is bringing about through, through all the hardship, yeah, true. He's bringing about a better understanding. It's true. Uh, 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 what if these plagues, people? What if plagues are blessings? I mean, sometimes in life, really bad things actually uh, help us change. You know, with this corona that happened, the world I feel like changed in an instant, actually for the better, more meaningful. I mean, a horrible thing happened, but everyone's mindset. Change, I feel, and connections and relationships change because the world changed. So, right. Oh, okay. Um, hey, Sister Spooky, I'm so happy you're here. And Krupa, also, you're amazing. Um, yeah, the Jewish people, I don't know, there's some, I think, uh, what's his name? Um, Robin Williams, who said, <laughs> what did he say? Something like, may, well, may rest in peace. May rest in peace. He said something like, I don't know, something like, the Jews make it because they 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 laugh. They have to. <laughs> All the hardships. The only way to get through it is you know, the best comedians in the world. I think he said were Jews. You know, so that's the way we get through things is to laugh and make meaning of all our pain. Who's watching us right now or watches uh, Leah's movies is Jewish. What is the significance do you think for yourselves of, of Passover of, of, of the Jewish tradition for you? What, where, where does this, um, you know, we can talk a lot about ourselves and how yeah. it's, it's related to our roots. Because how of, is it, how is it, wait, yeah, I'm answering. No, it's no, a question that right. I'm putting out oh, there. Okay. I want, yeah, well, I'd like you to share. Yeah. Uh, those of you who are not Jewish. Um, what's the meaning of what's the mean, Yeah, mm -hmm. what's the meaning of the, of the story of the, mm -hmm. the Exodus to you? And a lot of non-Jews came out of, a lot of Egyptians came out of, right? So, uh, I don't know. I'm going to give an answer. I want to hear what the answer is. We're, we're going to be checking on this. <laughs> <laughs> my my little toddler not gonna. Hey hey, could you sing a Pesach song? Ask again. Oh okay. So I was saying for those of you who are not who are not Jewish, I was interested in hearing what's your take on it. What is the significance of the story of Passover to you? Okay, okay. Meaning a nation. I, I have something yeah. in mind that I could say, but I would like to just see what what. Where people also okay. have Mary B is here. Mary B, have you ever celebrated Pesach? Have you been to a Passover Seder before? I'd love to hear. And what, yeah, I mean, the story of a, a nation who was slaves and got out through God's help. I mean, what, yeah, through the people of the world, what significance is this to you? I mean, that a, a little group of people got out of Egypt and now we're celebrating. Yeah, exactly. That's a beautiful answer, Shane. The final redemption is for the whole world. Right. And so the final redemption all began in the first redemption, which again was supposed to be the redemption of the world. All of Egypt was supposed to come out and meet God at Mount Sinai. It didn't happen that way, but it set foot for the possibility that a nation that was enslaved, mm -hmm. that that everybody was enslaved in Egypt. Even yeah. even Pharaoh was enslaved oh, in Egypt because he believed that he was enslaved to uh, the forces above, that he had no Nature. free will, that he had no choice. The breaking out of this, and then from there on, all the all the all the uh, all the uh, from that original um, breakthrough from those ideas. Um, I was busy with my son, so it's almost midnight and he's still up. This is crazy. This has never happened. This is Pesach, okay? He thinks, Pesach, yeah, he thinks it's Pesach. I bet on the night of Pesach, he'll be sleeping. Right. Okay? By the way, Pesach means the mouth, <laughs> oh, mouth. talking. Yeah. So we, we are all okay. <laughs> included, all right, mouth right, talking. Right, right. Uh, Allison <laughs> says it shows us community to her. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah it is. Um, yeah. Fortunately, we, had, we, had, we did have <laughs> so. a whole bunch of of of, uh, of Gentiles actually come out. Out with right. us, they called yeah. the Erev Rav, and they were mm. they were the they Jews. were according to oh, yeah. according to Moses. Right, right, if we right. didn't come out 
part of us non-Jews, we would have failed the mission because the whole point was to go down there and bring everybody out. If we didn't have even uh, even the representatives of the world of the world nations, it wouldn't mm -hmm. have been it wouldn't have been uh, mm -hmm. successful. I mean, the reality is that the Jewish people are supposed to be examples of how to get out of things and to teach the world. So if something we as being um, slaves and slavery in everyday life we have, you know. So it could be a miracle from God to help us emotionally, physically, spiritually to get out of something, even if it seems like the end of the world, like, you know, what we just had, we had a couple years ago, we had a plague happen to the whole world, you know. Um, and the, yeah, right, the whole redemption is supposed to be for the whole world, not just the Jewish people or, or our whole lives also don't just depend on that. We're supposed to every day go through what we do and make this world a better place. It doesn't, we don't just focus on the Messiah and a redemption. We're focusing every day, hopefully, to make the world a better place. And so, if we're ready, song. I want to share, I want to share a, a song uh, that we used to do. Wow. Uh, we used to sing every year at our setter. Uh, before I became religious, we used to sing this. And now also now when we do the, the night before before the Passover with the family. And uh, you're probably familiar with this song. Oh. Very thing. You can change it up a little bit. YouTube doesn't like music like this sometimes, so we're going to change up a little bit. Copyright stuff. mention me <laughs> okay yeah 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 he's potty training okay so one second we're gonna get you soon uh go into your room okay 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 what okay. well, you need to talk for some second good night everybody and no, no, no. happy passover to everybody maybe i'll okay, be back i'm gonna help him uh get tuck, tuck in and help uh us really go okay. to bed with lovely <laughs> lovely sharing this with you guys oh no okay he's happy leaving passover. so i guess i'm gonna stop soon because it's, it's like almost midnight um, anyway, let me know if you have any questions of anything else right now. I can answer you. If um, not, I'm going to go sleep soon. 
I'm so happy every one of you guys are here um, to celebrate Passover with us, Pesach with us. Um, we're so happy to have you guys. We should go a little longer with some music. Maybe we'll do one more, more song. I don't know if you have any. Um, uh, um, never mind. We're tired. <laughs> My husband wakes up really early in the morning. Um, but anyway, you guys are amazing. Cheyenne, Sister Spooky, Allison, Mary B, Mary Lewis, Meraki, everybody. You guys are awesome. I hope you have an amazing Pesach. I hope that we can all tap into the blessing of being free inside our bodies, inside our minds, inside our souls. That's the whole point of Pesach, you know, to, to tap into um, being awesome free people and not, you know, being ourselves. We can be slaves of what people think of us, what society, come on, what society wants of us, what a husband thinks about us, what our wife thinks about us. Well, we could just may God bless us just to be ourselves, you know because we're so unique. Each and every one of us is so unique. Um, anyway, yes, happy cleaning. Paul Robinson? No, I, I did not. <laughs> I don't know what I said. Oh, really? We gotta, we gotta learn his uh, songs. Um, thank you. Okay, you guys are amazing. May God bless us all. I, I'm so glad my, my little son was here to hang out with us. And we'll hope to do a live stream. Maybe we'll do one every other week. We don't know, but we'll out with you guys um and uh yeah hug some ass may suck some ass happy cleaning you guys are awesome enjoy your hagadas and we hope to see you guys soon bye and